If a web application that is using serialized objects to transfer sensitive data between web browser and web server doesn't properly check the authenticity of the serialized objects, then an attacker might be able to modify the data types of the object attributes to bypass authentication and get access to administrator account. During this video, we look at this scenario in action. For the purpose of this exercise, we use a lab from Web Security Academy and you can find the link to this lab in the video description. This lab is using a serialization based session mechanism, which basically means the application is using serialized objects to store user session data in a cookie. So to solve this lab, we need to exploit the insecure deserialization vulnerability to bypass authentication and get access to admin account and finally delete a user. All right, let's jump in and get started by clicking on access the lab. First, we need to log in into our account so that we can review the authenticated session cookie value. From the home page, we click on my account link. In the login page, we fill out the username and password with the account credentials that we got from lab description and proceed to login. As we see, the account credentials were correct and we could log in into our account. To find the session cookie value, in Burp we go to HTTP history tab and select the HTTP get request to slash my account URL. This is the request for accessing our account page after successfully logging into the application. So it should contain the authenticated session cookie that we are looking for. Now we go to request tab and select the session cookie value. We are interested to see what information is stored in the session cookie. By looking at the inspector tab, we see the inspector has already decoded the cookie value for us. As we see the inspector has first decoded the selected value from URL encoding, then it has decoded its output from base64 encoding. By reviewing the decoded output, we see the cookie value is in fact a serialized PHP object. Now that we have identified the serialized object in the HTTP request, to further study this object and also to test for insecure deserialization vulnerabilities, we send this request to burp repeater. Once again, we select the cookie value and go to the decoded serialized object in the inspector panel. PHP serialization uses string format, so it's really easy to understand what information is stored in this object. In PHP serialization format, the letters are used to define the type of data and the numbers are used to define the length of data. The letter O means the entry is an object and the letter S means the entry is a string. So the first part means this is a user object and obviously it's a four character string. The following number, which is two, means the user object has two attributes. The object attributes are key value pairs which are surrounded by curly braces. The key or name of first attribute is username, which is a 8 character string, and its value is our account username, which is a 6 character string. The name of the second attribute is access token, which is a 12 character string, and as we see, its value is a 32 character string. So this is a PHP serialized object called user with two attributes, username and access token. When a user attempts to perform an action or access a resource by submitting the relevant HTTP request, the web browser sends the serialized user object in the session cookie to the server as part of the HTTP request. The server then deserializes the received object and checks the username and access token values to see if the user has the right privilege to perform the action or accessing the requested resource. Now let's see if the current user can access the admin panel. In the request tab, we replace slash my account with the slash admin where the admin panel is located. Then we send the request. We get 401 HTTP response code. So the request for accessing the admin panel was declined by the application due to the lack of valid admin credentials. Since the current user is not an admin, therefore he can't access the admin functions and resources. Now we are interested to see if we can somehow modify the user object in order to exploit the insecure deserialization and get access to admin panel without having the admin password. Before modifying the user object, we need to know how PHP code performs comparison between different data types. In PHP, there are two options when comparing data values loose comparison and a straight comparison. 
Double equal sign represent loose comparison, which is used to compare data value from different types such as integer and a string. Triple equal sign represent a straight comparison that is used to compare data from the same type. So basically loose comparison only compares the value of data, while a straight comparison compares both the value and type of the data. To get a better understanding, let's take a look at an example. In this simple PHP code, we are comparing an integer data with the string data, using both strict and loose comparison. As we see, the value of both data is the same, which is 7, but the data type is different. Since strict comparison compares both the value and type of data, it returns false. But the result of loose comparison is true, as it only compares the value of data and ignores the data type. The loose comparison first converts a string to integer and then compares their value. To see how the logic of loose comparison can lead to security issues, let's take a look at another example. What do you think would be the result of the first comparison? Well, you might be surprised to hear that the result will be true. Can you think of a reason why it returns true? It's interesting to know that the loose comparison converts the entire string to integer based on its initial number and ignores the rest of the string, so it converts the entire string to integer 7. Therefore, the first and the second comparisons are considered to be exactly the same and return true. Now we get to the most interesting part. Let's take a look at the loose comparison between the integer 0 and the random alphanumeric string. What do you think would be the result here? It's super interesting to know that the result of this comparison is also true. You might be wondering how could possibly the result of this comparison be true, while their values are totally different. Well, here is the answer. As I mentioned a few moments ago, when the PHP code performs a loose comparison between an integer and a string, it first converts the string data to integer based on the initial number. And if the string data doesn't start with a number, then it converts the entire string to integer 0. And that's why the result of this comparison is true. Now that we are familiar with the loose comparison logic in PHP, it's time to see how can we take advantage of its behavior and modify the user object to exploit the insecure deserialization and get access to admin panel. So if in the user object we change the access token value to integer 0 and the admin access token saved on the server doesn't start with a number, then the result of the loose comparison between them would be true and we should be able to bypass the authentication. Alright, let's first change the username value to administrator and change its length to 13 as administrator is 13 character string. Bear in mind when we make changes to an attribute, we also need to update its length and type labeled accordingly. Now we change the value of access token to integer 0. Since the type of the attribute is changed from a string to integer, we remove the string value surrounded by double quote and also change the data type label from S to I which stands for integer. Now that we have changed the username and access token values, we can click on apply changes so that the inspector automatically re-encode and updates the modified object in the HTTP request. Bear in mind that this attack would only work if three conditions are met. First, the application doesn't check if the user object has been modified. Second, the admin access token saved on the server doesn't start with a number. And finally, the PHP code is using loose comparison and not strict comparison. Alright, let's send the request to see if all these conditions are met. As we see, the request is completed by the application and by inspecting the HTTP response, we see that we could successfully access the admin panel without the valid admin password and only by taking advantage of the loose comparison logic when it compares integer and string data. The last step to solve the lab is deleting user callers. So in the HTTP response, we copy the URL for deleting callers. Then we update the URL in the HTTP request and send the request. We follow the redirection to the admin page. Now if we render the HTTP response, 
we see the message that we solved the lab and successfully deleted user callless. If you enjoyed watching this video, don't forget to give it a like and also make sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this.